Hello and welcome to Paula Cods and my name is Christina and this week's quick tips is actually going to be a little bit different. We recently did a collaboration with Clip Studio Paint where we went through the process of concepting a cute little vending bot, flushing out a rough 3D base in Blender, adding a rig and weight painting the model and then finally using the posable models to create a concept sheet showing the functionality of the vending bot. The video will be out very soon, so definitely check it out when it's released. We'll let you know when it goes live. For this video, I wanted to basically cover the Blender portion of that tutorial just in greater detail. So what do I mean by that? I wanted to show how to take a basic model like this example and create two posable versions in Clip Studio Paint. The first method will be done through traditional rigging and weight painting in Blender, Whereas the second method will cover how to use Clip Studio Paint's own modeler software to create some linear animations, which we can access directly through Clip Studio Paint's library. Let's get started! Alright, method number one. Let's add in a rig. Before doing anything, just make sure you have the Rigify add-on enabled in Blender. Also with our model, let's make sure the normals look alright. Under Show Overlays, check Face Orientation and make sure that the outer parts of the model are blue. If anything's red that isn't supposed to be red, head to Mesh in Edit Mode and under Normals either flip or recalculate the outside normals. This is just to make sure that we don't get any errors when importing into Clip Studio Paint. With Shift A, add in a single bone, position it facing down and just make sure that it's covering parts of the base of the model. This will act as our main root bone, so when we move this, we move the entire rig. Next, extrude some bones using E in each direction. Note that we need to extrude from the tip of the root bone or the rig won't work properly. These new bones will act as a transition between the base and the legs. Continue with extruding the bones to fit the limbs and position them accordingly. Just make sure you're doing all of this in edit mode and not in pose mode. So why do I want two bones per leg, you might ask? If we head into pose mode and I now move these bones with R, you'll see that this gives the leg a bit more flexibility. Just like with our legs, instead of sticks, we have a knee joint to separate the upper and lower leg and it's the exact same thing with this bot. Once we've tested our rig and made sure everything is working, let's move on to weight painting. Select your mesh or several meshes if you have them, shift select your rig and hit Ctrl P followed by with automatic weights. Back in pose mode, you'll notice some really funky behavior. This is because when assigning automatic weights, the weights are distributed automatically and evenly. Basically, this works really well for organic models, but not so much mechanical models like this one. We don't want smooth transitions, we want the bones to either be 100% affected or 0% affected. To fix this, we want each bone to correspond to its mesh part. Take note that I've renamed each bone to give me a better idea of which bone is which. You can rename them under the bone properties menu while you're in pose mode. I've also named each model for clarity's sake. So to make sure the bones corresponding to the correct part is right, choose a body part like the main body and under object data properties just make sure that you delete all of the vertex groups except for main body. This basically means that the only vertices that are affected by the weight paint is the main body. Before I deleted everything, we can go through the different bones on the list and you'll notice that the weight paint varies for each bone, but we don't want the bone that we have selected to affect any other mesh, just the main body. Which is why we deleted everything else. Hopefully that makes sense. Now in weight paint mode, if your model isn't fully red, Make sure that you either paint it red using the draw brush or you just use the gradient tool, which I just prefer overall. It's just so much faster. So why are we painting it red, you might ask? Well, we want this part of the model to be 100% affected by this bone. 
If we paint it blue instead by choosing zero for weight, this part of the model would be 0% affected by this bone. Okay, now that we've repeated this process, this is the result we get. Now, if we have a complex mesh like this with rig bones, we need to weight paint or the rig won't even be registered within Clip Studio Paint. If we now export this entire model, including the rig, and import it into Clip Studio Paint, you can see that we're actually able to move the legs freely. Isn't that awesome? Oh, and if you ever get visual glitches when importing a model into Clip Studio Paint, try throwing on a triangulate modifier in Blender before exporting. This might be the case when using booleans or if your model's topology isn't quite right. Now that we've covered method one, what about if we have a more linear animation, like these trays moving in and out? Wouldn't it be a hassle to just go through the trouble of rigging the entire mesh just for that functionality? Well, yes, fellow human. <laughs> Instead of this, Clip Studio Paint actually has its own modeler program where you can animate whichever parts you want to move. Before export, just make sure that whatever part you want to move on its own is its own model and not merged with the base. Since we won't really be worrying about the legs anymore, I'm just going to Ctrl J, join all of the legs with the base and leave these shelves on their own. From the Clip Studio launcher, open the modeler software. We're going to create a 3D object and under the little tree node, press add from file. Find your 3D model and using the view tools up here, let's get a better view of our model. It might be hard to see our model properly, so let's enable edges to see things a little bit easier. And under Move and Move Parts, we select the first shelf. Under Movability, press the plus button. Let's just rename this Top Shelf In Out. The first keyframe is on by default, so all we need to do is to go to keyframe 40, move the shelf out and hit the keyframe button. Scrub through the timeline now and we've got ourselves a handy little animation. Repeat this process for all of the shelves and we should now have three shelves that move in and out. Once we're happy, we can capture a thumbnail for each shelf or the entire mesh if you want. This is basically to just make it easier to see things in the thumbnails in Clip Studio Paint. Go to File, Register as New Material and just name the object appropriately. You can either make a folder in the same directory as this library or just add the model to whichever category is most fitting. Back in Clip Studio Paint, let's drag in our model from the material library and there you go! If you now press this little button on the far right, we can access the animations we just made. How freaking cool is this? So yeah, you can imagine this can be super handy for 3D models that open and close like a door or the lid of a laptop, a pizza box and so on. And the best part, once we created a new material and added it to the library, it will always be available in the Clip Studio library. Oh, that was quite the lengthy tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. If you want to see how Omerjan used these 3D models in Clip Studio Paint to draw over and create a concept sheet with some callout drawings, make sure to head over to the Clip Studio Paint's English YouTube channel, which I will link to in the description and pinned comment below. Thanks again to Clip Studio Paint for inviting us as guest collaborators onto their channel. It's such an honor. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye!